talk. Let's go with Porter Lamb first. Hey there, need something? What do you do around here, Porter? Ah, look. It's catch-all category, I guess. I work for Elder Ip. It's a bit like being a deputy. Maybe I'll do cowboy for him. Ah, make sure people don't break the rules. Protect people who need protecting. Mostly, I just do whatever Ip asks me to. It's a pretty quiet job most days. Today's not one of those days. I also handle a lot of maintenance. I don't actually do the repairs, but I've got most of the keys. It makes it easy to ensure only authorized people get into the sensitive places. Electricity goes down, I let the electrician who fixes the wiring. Toilets clogged, I let the drone guy who opens it back up. Ah, looks like somebody went through Tong's things. Has anybody been inside? Not since I've been here, but before it found him, could have been anybody, really. Ip had a key to his place, but locks total crap. Anybody half decent at cracking mag locks could have gotten inside. What's missing? Uh, his BTLs, hard drives, crit sticks are all missing. Sounds like Killa looted the place to me. All this talk of monsters? Yeah, sure, there's scary things that go bump in the night. Most of the scary bumps I hear are from handguns and gangers. See you later. I talked to Zippy Zip Zippity. Zip Zip Zip. This orc is busily snacking on a steamed bun. As you approach, he wipes off one of his hands and sticks it up towards you. Hey, stranger, nice to meet you. Zippy Tote, get your service? How you liking one pool of garden? I'm Gremlin, nice to meet you, Zippy. Nice to meet you, too. Listen, I know it's a little forward of me to just say hello and whatnot, but I'm interested in giving you a hand if I can. Zippy, Zippy gestures expansively at the squalid, neon lit streets of one pool garden. This is my home. At least for the time being, and I like to stop these killings. We've never met before, this, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. The elders had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gan and Elder Nakamura after they got ripped apart, but I don't want to dig any deeper. So, since I don't know you, and I can smell Shadowrunner a mile away, you've got to be the outsider they asked to stop the killings, right? Zippy tilts his head back, obviously pleased at his amateur deduction. Yeah, nothing gets by you, does it? See, I got good eyes. I like a lot of good eyes, actually. If you're in the market for replacements, only slightly used, and they only come from certified donors. I swear. A hearty belly laugh erupts from the orc, and he slaps one of his thighs in elation. Man, I kill myself. Yeah. You're a stand-up comedian? Any jokes like that? Are you kidding me? I'm the only trained surgeons around here. Surgeons. I'm one of the only trained surgeons around here. I keep the other Wempoans healthy. Gotta practice down the road. Blind Chin's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an implant specialist and that's it. So, how'd you end up here? I did my residency back in the UCAS. Could've become a real MD, too, if things hadn't gone south for unrelated reasons. Zippy opens his coat, revealing a cyber deck. He pats it proudly. Awesome deck a little, but I'm better at slicing skin than I see. Than ice. One Poet Garden seemed a good fit for me. Now you must have a lot of customers. Uh, that's the chip truth. I got a charge. I have to charge to cover my costs and eats, but it's damn near free service. It's always a waiting list, but it's good, honest work. I like helping my neighbors and the community. We all look out for each other. If somebody messes with one of us, they mess with all of us. That kind of community is rare as gold these days. How many places have an ethos like that? Not the damn corpse, that's for sure. I've lived a lot of places. Done my fair share of shadow running. This place is special. It's been a long time since I really felt like anywhere was a real home. Zippy looks off past you toward the Wimpoa Garden streets. His expression grows wistful, like he's remembering something from a long time ago. I'm sure I'll move again, but not for a while. I'm not done with the city or these people. Ah, I am suspicious of him. So it's fairly peaceful around here. Ah, eh, for the most part. Other than these killings, we don't have much by way of problems. We do information security for the triads. That makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. Anyone starts something, we hit them in the matrix, while our triad friends hit them in the meat space. Some small-time gangs have tried pushing in here before, but they backed off when they figured out they weren't just picking a fight with Tang and his guys, but with both the Red Dragon and Yellow Lotus. They got the message real quick. What was left of them, anyways. 
Let me ask you about the Wimpolo Garden. Sure thing, what do you want to know? What are your thoughts on the murders? There's a sharp intake of breath as Zippy shakes his head. Ooh, pretty gruesome business. Gan died from a broken neck, like someone had wrenched it around and his arms and legs were cut off. Some skid flayed away too. Nakamura had his throat ripped out by someone with pretty sharp teeth. At first I thought it was a devil rat. Teeth marks were all from something with a humanoid jaw. I didn't look at Yatunde. From what I saw at distance, it was the same story. Didn't see much point since I had seen it twice already. Vampire. As for Tong, from what Porter told me, it was Gan and Nakamura all over again. You take a look at him yet? Yeah, it seems he's described for the others. Zippy shakes his head sadly. Damn, I like Tong. The BTL business is unsavory, but the man had to eat, and his regular sims were great. Generally all around nice guy, friendly with everyone, never had anyone mad at him. There ain't no justice, let me tell ya. What can you tell me about the elders? Zippy laughs, shrugging. Well, they're an eclectic bunch, that's for sure. Where to start? Nig's the spiritual leader here. She's the voice of the Wimpolans, I guess. A lot of her close friends are really more of followers, since she's something of a priest for the machine spirits. Maybe it's a cultural thing for people who grew up here, but it's never called to me. Still, she makes a damn fine pot of tea. Yips the muscle. Has an encyclopedic knowledge of cyber and bioware. Definitely a good guy to have watching your back. Not too friendly, but you know how it is. You get a lot of cyber, people start wondering if you'll tear their arms off. Zippy makes a chopping gesture with one hand. He's got moves right out of Blood Carnival 3 The Reckoning. Terrible movie, but great fighting choreography. And what about Tang? I don't know much about him, but I think he's got some kind of fetish for automation. Found him cooing over some trids of automated delivery drones in a warehouse once. He works with drones at a shop called the Blessed Autofab. He was raving about the efficiency of the movement patterns or something. You already know about Tong, Ran Sims, BTL, Skill Chips. Gan used to be a city planner before he had a nervous breakdown and got involved in statistical analysis. Zippy pauses to collect his thought. Nakamura came from Fukuoka and was interested in entertainment, trip mostly. Spent a lot of time analyzing subliminals and ads. And there was Magpie. He was a chief decker, hot as hell against ice. Built her own hardware. Salty old woman, though. Never met anyone who was quite as shrill or nasty when she was mad. She was mad most time. Hey, nobody mentioned Magpie to me when she died. She didn't. Maybe a month ago she just up and disappeared. I went to her shop one day and she just wasn't open. Nobody's seen her since. Kinda of pain in the ass too. She owed me some new analyzed software she picked up. I've never heard of Magpie either. She must be one of the newer Wimpolans. If she was the Decker, she would have replaced Elder Gao. Ah, oh, itchy nose, itchy nose. No surprise there. Gao was older than Quinn. She had gone. She had. Well, the Terracotta Warriors. When I was learning decking from him, he could barely get out of bed. Still fast as hell in the Matrix, though. How can you be new and an elder? Isabel rolls her eyes. It's a stupid name. It doesn't actually have much to do with time spent in the community. That has something to do with it. That has something to do with it, sure. But it's mostly about how skilled you are. How good your connections are. How much you can help everybody else. Should have called them experts or something. Bingo! That's exactly it. She was only here for about three years. Said she knew a lot of people all over the Matrix in Shanghai, Beijing, all kinds of places. That plus her skill meant she was a shoe in when Gao died. So why did she... Where do you think she went? No idea. One day she was here, the next poof. At first I thought she was just on vacation. Since she had mentioned waiting to see the Kingdom of Hawaii. Wanting to see the Kingdom of Hawaii someday. But it didn't feel right. She would have at least told me she was leaving. It seems mighty suspicious to me. Nobody else seems to care what happened to her. Probably because she pissed them all off so bad. Is there any place you think I should start looking? A lot of her to disappear, don't you think? Of course it's odd. She owed me lunch, too. She was sort of paid her debts promptly. Might want to check out her shop. It's all locked up, but the other elders have a spare key. Couldn't hurt to look around, and even though Magpie was always button heads with the other elders, they wouldn't have any reason not to let you join in.
let you in. Ah, oh, what do you mean, buttonheads? Magpie and the others never saw eye to eye. She was contrary for the sake of it. Most of the rest had a grand vision for what they wanted this neighborhood to become. Magpie just wanted to deck. She was, <laughs> yeah, sounded terrible with that accent, wanted to deck. She was only an elder because they needed someone with her matrix chops. Last big argument was between her, Nig, Ip, and Nakamura. It was over something relatively trivial. I think Nakamura wanted to expand the pirate trid business into the Matrix, and she just absolutely refused. Hmm, why did she refuse? She said something about not using up valuable bandwidth for trivial entertainment bullshit. Anyways, it went from there into the, this rant about how she wasn't going to let Tang expand his drone business any further because it would just get too much Megacorp attention. They accused her of blocking them just because she could, which is probably true. Lots of screaming. What do you mean, blocking them? Everybody needs her matrix skills for their businesses to run properly. There are other deckers, me, say, or Mo. Oh my god. Can't pronounce that at all. Mo. She had the. But she had the infrastructure. If their project didn't interest her, she wouldn't even give them the time of day. She's real hard head about having her time wasted. But she figures if she's not interested in something, there's no value objectively. Kind of major blind spot if you ask me. Sounds like she was critical. Yeah, nah. Yeah, no. She was, but since she disappeared, Elder Ip's taken over running the Matrix infrastructure. He's not as good as, it, as she was, but his experience with drones makes him the best candidate. He wouldn't entrust someone like that to anyone who was an Elder. So there you go. See you later, Zippy. Zip zip zoo, zip zip zoo. Anybody over here talking to him? big guy? Aha, little guy, big guy. It's Mo. Ah, Mo. Man in front of the stall is rooting through a box of music chips with the swift fingers of someone who knows what they're looking for. Behind him, a music player pumps out a constant stream of distorted, atonal music. Stall's proprietor is nowhere to be seen. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? They got four bootlegs of e Echelon 60, the unreleased Enoch and Keys double chips show from Brazzaville. Absolutely zero chips from Shotgun Bloom. This stall stuff is pretty second rate. Hey man, don't get down on e Echelon 60. I saw them when they played that unsilenced show at the old. Choco Tart Factory out in Swin Wan. Like, oh god. Swin, Swin Wan. Yeah, I'll go with that. Show was amazing, even if the police had to break it up midway through the second set. The music aficionado waves his hand dismissively. The show might have been great. Come on. Echelon 60's old news. They already bring, they're, they're already being mainstream. I saw Trudad for the new Mitsubishi Astro scooter, and they were using Main Volt Underbus as the backing music. Made me sad, I tell ya. Yeah, I'm gonna treat all these guys in here like they're from the south. The Decker inclines his head politely towards you. Mo, at your service. Decker, technologist, music fan. You're not from around here, are you? You don't hold yourself like a native? Yeah, I'm from the UKS. Mo runs a hand through his hair, shaking the collective rain off of it. I thought so. What brings you here? Trying to find out who's been killing the elders. Decker pauses a moment, face falling. Oh, that's nasty business. I heard Tom died tonight. Don't know who or what they pissed off, but it seems like a really bad scene. I'm trying to keep my nose out of it. Still, I like this place. Is there anything I can do to help? What can you tell me about the poems? We're a collection of freaks, geeks, nerds, and tech junkies. This place may look like a third world bazaar, but believe me, we have stuff here that cutting edge, that's cutting edge in almost every field. Mo swells with pride and plants both hands firmly on his hip. Maybe it's just not as advanced as the stuff the Magus have in their development labs, but it's as advanced as anything you can find in a store. People come from all over the world to buy and sell here and work out deals for big shipments. We got contacts with every pirate smuggling group in the South China Sea. Every major syndicate and gang in the Free Enterprise Zone knows not to mess with us. Not only are there lots of us, nobody wants to lose what we're selling. Red Dragon made a play four years ago, but we chased him out. 
Mo gestures with both hands of shooing away a bothersome insect. Scoot it off back to Ho Man Tin. And they've never been back. Good for you, that's how you survived. It's all about playing the angles. Yeah, it pissed them off. Then we sold goods to the Yellow Lotus at a discount. In exchange, Yellow Lotus kept them off our backs. You don't have to beat up the big guy to win. You just have to make him step back so the other big guy see he's off balance. Stand-up fights are for the Megas. We're about survival. Just like everybody else in the shadows. What do you know about the murders? I'm trying to stay as far away from that as possible. Not connected enough to hear anything important. All I'll talk about monsters is just plain dark. I'm not afraid of monsters, but I don't want to get their attention. All I know is that a couple of months ago we had Elders Nakamura, Yatunde Gan, and Magpie, and now we don't. I've heard about Magpie. Sounds like she was kind of vicious. To be blunt, she's a hateful, shrewish old badger of a person. It was always her way of the highway. She'd butt heads with the other elders over damn near anything. Last fight she had was with Tang over something or other, I guess. I guess she ended up throwing some of his micro drones into a deep fryer and threatened to kick his ass around the block. What was her line of business? Matrix gear. Her shop's called the Jack Point. Not very imaginative, I know. She always had the hottest programs, best chips, made some killer decks for anybody willing to pay her rates. Cost plenty of million, but she was one of the best in the business. At least in Hong Kong. If you want to know more about her, you should talk to Zippy. He's one of the only people around here who got along with Magpie. You can probably find him by the MTR station. He loves the steam bun cart over there. What's your area of expertise? I'm a decker. I used to be company man for years, pushing code on their servers, smearing little cyber pukes that would try to get into our secure systems. Made a pretty good living. Had my own place in the 48th floor in a corporate skyscraper scraper. The kind of things the Sims like Sims teach you everybody reaches for. The dream life. Uh, so how'd you end up here? I found out the company wasn't what I thought it was, sure. They paid me well and kept me in creature comforts, but I accidentally looked over some misfiled reports while cleaning out a company data store. Turns out one of the company's security riggers had gotten drunk and blabbed about some project or other being over budget and behind schedule. That's not good. It'd be a fireball offense, right? Mo purses his lips, his gaze going distant for a moment. I guess the management was worried that info would hurt their stock readings by a fraction of a point or two, so they fired a guy with a 308 round right through the skull. Whoa. That seems drastic. It may only have been fractions of a point, but that was still tens of millions of new. I guess that went beyond a firing fence, directly into murder territory. What's worse, since I knew about both the project and the murder, I could be next to the firing line. I knew it wasn't worth the expense to hunt down. As long as I kept my head down. So I came out here looking for like-minded deckers. I guess I ended up staying because I could get a semblance of community out here. I couldn't get that many other places. Ah, see you later, Mo. Who is this fellow? Breaker Huai? Hui? Hu? Hua? Ah, he's a troll. You go deep. As deep as I can. An, impo an imposing troll stands in front of a stall overflowing with weapons of all sorts. Pistols, rifles, and even brass knuckles overflow onto the rug around him. Ho oh, there! You look like a man who understands the value of self-defense. Breaker Hoy at your service. And I can prov promise you I can help you to defend yourself. What do you say? Want to take a look? Ah, show me what you got. I can buy another shotgun. Soft Benelli? Nope. Thank you. Poop. Poop. Nothing I want. I'm looking for information. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you want. Maybe I can help you out. Know anything about the murders? Just that elders have been getting hacked apart. Try to stay away from it all. No sense painting the crossheaders on my own forehead, right? Troll shrugs indifferently. I'm nobody important, and I aim to keep it that way. What's your impressions? Can't say I associate much with them. They organize big trade deals with the Loho Joa pirates, triads, and legitimate businesses. They tell us if somebody's been blacklisted and dispense justice when somebody breaks the rules. Beyond that, they leave us alone. And I leave them alone. I'm just not important enough to register on the radars. Only thing about Magpie. Never met her, thank God. She ran with the Deckers, mostly. Since she dealt in chips and software, I heard she was w hard to work with. I think the phrase I ever heard was that... She shrieked like a harpy with a fresh corpse. 
I don't know. Should ask Zippy though. He's a sharp one with a deck, so we know her better than most. So aside from Tong, who slings the BTLs around here? Uh the Red Spear game, they run up in here. They run up in here sometimes, but don't cause any trouble. Check out the parking garage south of here though. They usually hold hole up in there. Step light though. They don't know you and you cop an attitude, they'll put you in the ground. Well, they'll try to. Funny thing I heard, there was a shootout with some Hong Kong police in the garage a month ago. I was away in Beijing at the time, so I didn't see it directly. But everybody was talking about it when I got back. Why is that funny? Because we don't let the HKPF in here. Most times, we shoot at them if they try. Every time they come in here, it's bad for us. Because they're always looking for, for a scapegoat. Why would the elders let them in? Nobody knows. Ah. The plot thickens. Ooh, steam bun cart. This dumpy looking man is busily hawking a variety of grilled spherical treats of various sizes. Some are sold individually, some are skewered on sticks, and some are packaged up in sets of four or six. Wow, that rhymes. A sign on the front of the cart reads, Kieta's One Yen Yatai. A cacophony of small trid skeen screens are attached to the cart, each playing a different trid show. Interest you in some dango, takoyaki, take a takoyaki, maybe a nice nikuman. That's a pork bun with a Japanese twist. Any kind of tasty Japanese treat you can imagine, I've got. Maybe some curry fish balls on your speed. Kata will give you a hot desire, providing that desire is on my menu. Ah, I'll take some dango. Your wish is my command, good sir. Kata definitely pulls one of the dango sticks out of the cart and drops it into the grill. A small robotic arm slides out from the cart and begins turning the stick until the balls of rice flour are toasted brown color. Lifting from the grill, Kita drip dips the entire stick in a tub of sticky brown sauce before handing it to you. The snack has both a sweet and salty flavor, reminiscent of sesame seeds and soy. The balls inside are pleasantly warm, and surprisingly chewy, a bit like eating raw dough, without the attendant chalky taste. Kita leans back, studying you intently. The trid projections from his cart cause his face to be lit in a constantly shifting array of rainbow hues. So, what brings you to Wampoa Gardens, my friends? Somehow I doubt it's just the street food. Yeah, I'm looking for who's killing the Poe and Elders. Kieta shivers, wrapping his arms around his body. I've been hearing a lot about that. Haven't looked in too closely, though. It's just none of my business, you know. So what can, what's with all the trid screens? Kieta beams, gestures excitedly at them. You like these? I love trid operas. Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Indonesian. It doesn't matter. This way I get to watch all of my favorite shows without missing a beat. And I can work at the same time. Wow. Pirated Trid is my other business. I rip the streams in the Matrix, tap right into the corporate feeds, and resell them on chip he on chip out here. Kit, his face falls a bit and his enthusiasm wearings. I wish I could pay the bills. I wish I could pay the bills, but my food cart's a lot better at that. I don't know why, but most of the other Wapones seem to like Sim over Trid. They don't know what they're missing, although... One episode of Thousand Queens of Autumn and they'd be hooked for life. I'm just at the part where Orin has confessed her love to Takayama. But he's got to get his mech suit out of the front lines on Mars, so he can't be with her. Downright heartbreaking, I tell ya. Yeah, sounds interesting show, alright. Oh god, they're gonna see more. Eyes twinkling, Keita leans forward in breathless excitement. Oh, you have no idea. 312 episodes chronicling a noble mech pilot and the tumultuous love affair he has with the space station governor's daughter. The pathos, the majesty, the battle of Lagrange 1 spans five episodes just by itself. For some reason, I guess it just didn't resonate with the wider public. I, I don't know why. Who doesn't love to see a trid show about giant flying robots, love, betrayal, and spies? Sounds like Gundam. I've got to stop myself before I get carried away. Was there something else you needed? Yeah, got any thoughts on these murders? Yeah, ignore them. Kita shrugs indifferently. I saw the crowd down at Tong Sensory Carnival earlier tonight, but I didn't know the guy very well. I'm a Trid fan. He liked The Sims. Not a lot of crossover between us. What can you tell me about the people here? 
Queer tech heads, deckers, riggers, trid pirates, and everything in between. If I had to define this place, I'd say it's Asia's mecca for people like us. As for elders, I can give you the basics. I'm a small fry, so we're not exactly on social terms. Mm, some kind of crazy tech witch. She summons up spirits and casts spells. And works as the spiritual center of the tribe. She's a lot crafty than she seems. She has his has this mother to everyone act going on, but I watched her manipulate people and doing all kinds of stuff they wouldn't normally do. They thought it was their idea the whole time. Magically, you mean? No, I don't think so. She's just really good with people. Ip's a killer, addicted to cybernetic implants. He always has to have the newest and freshest gear. The funny thing is, I've never seen him fight. I kind of get the impression he's a coward. He'd rather let one of his buddies handle the problem than do it himself. All I know about Tang is that he loves drones and does a little decking. Frankly, I find him kind of boring. All he talks about is neural networks, dark knowledge, and evolution of machine learning. Like I said, boring. Okay. Let's see. Go into the garage, but there is yet some. There's at least one other person here. Who's this Demerge? This man is a tired, world weary, weary demeanor about him. His eyes track your movements with a penetrating critical precision. Something about him, the lines about his eyes perhaps makes you suspect he's been a lot of, he's seen a lot of terrible things happen. He lifts his cup of cheap, cheap soy cap as you approach. Let me guess, you're the freelancers, the elders are paying to look into the murders around here. How'd you know? You've got the right kind of eyes. I get looking for something and don't seem to trust anyone. Outsiders don't generally wander around Wimpo Garden without an escort. Locals don't make them feel too welcome. Unless they've been invited. There's only one reason out here to be inviting Shadowrunners out here. Call me Demergio. I'm not one of the Wimpoans, but I've been here long enough that they don't think twice about me being here. Demergio drains the last of his soy calf in a large gulp. So what you found so far? What's it to you? Professional curiosity. I used to be with the New York Police Department as part of the Thaumaturgical Research Division. Part of the CSI, that's Magic Division. Part of the CSI branch, except I did the magical investigations while the other guys pulled prints and checked blood samples. Demergio tosses the soy calf cup towards the nearby garbage can. It bounces around the rim and rolls inside. When I hear about shit like this happening, I keep my head to the ground. Old habits, you know. So aren't you investigating it? Elder Nig asked me to look into the killings after the first murder. She couldn't afford my fee, though, so I took a pass. Not just the money either. Demergio shudders, folding his arms across his chest. You see that stuff day after day, you pay a price. It eats away at you. You know, what it's like to feel all that sickness and anger every day? To be asked to pick up a murder weapon and relive somebody's death. Feel it going into your neck, pleading in the voice of a dead woman for her killer to spare you. These days I'd rather interrogate the living thanks. Whoa. What are you talking about? I can read objects. It's called psychometry. A little trick I managed to pick up. Don't really know how. I hold something. I can tell you what happened to it. Who owned it. How it killed someone. If someone loved it or was afraid of it. Useful, but it'll tax your heart. Before you ask, no. I'm not going to read anything you find. I told Nick, mm, mm, God, I hate that. I didn't want any part of this. You want advice? I'll give you that. But I'm not getting drawn in, in further than that. Aside from that, is there anything I can help you with? Tong wasn't afraid when he died. He was caught by surprise. Demergio arches an eyebrow. That's not what I would have expected. The amount of mess at each scene, the victim should have left behind a hell of a lot of fear and pain. Are you sure? Very sure Tong died tonight, so the astral signature hasn't had time to fade. There's only a sense of perfuncture perfunctory accomplishment. It sounds like this wasn't a crime of passion. Plan attack would have been that kind would have that kind of resonance, in my experience. It's possible the gore show is to throw off anyone looking for the actual reason. Demergio closes his eyes and starts to nod. Yeah, if I wanted to kill someone and get away with it, I'd try to point the finger at some kind of monster. Demergio opens his eyes and smiles a thin, humorless grin. Basic Investigation 101. It's usually the simplest explanation, but don't discount other possibilities. You think the mess wasn't incidental? 
It's a possibility. Ask yourself this. Mutilation happened after Tong's death. Why would the killer perform that kind of ritual? Serial killers who engage that kind of ritual don't feel perfunctory, perfunctory about it. In my experience, it tends to feel more like they're taking communion. It's a religious or sexual feeling most of the time. It doesn't feel that way. I don't think the killer is actually pathological. Hmm. What do you can tell me about the Wampoans? I don't know much. Even though I've been here almost two years, I'm an outsider. I don't really accept anyone who's not as much of the tech nut as they are. I'm just the crazy mage who lives down the road. Demergio pauses and looks off into the distance as he collects his thoughts. Ip's got some heavy duty cyberware. Basically enforcer for the rest of the council. He doesn't seem to get much policy. To set much policy. Mm is a shaman that worships machine spirits. It's all a bunch of hokum if you ask me. Magic is magic, whatever you want to call the source is fine by me. But don't ask me to believe in the great spirit of electronics. As for everybody else, they tend to be an okay bunch. A bit strange. But that's fringe culture for you. You scrounge tech, rebuild it, sell it off. Some of them have their own autofab shops. This stuff's pretty high quality, too. People from all over Asia come to shop here if they need something rare or unusual. A tight knit little community, all things considered. What do you know about the murders? They started a couple weeks ago. Elder Gan was the first to go. That's when. In, I can't say that name. Asked if I could look into them. He, he was ripped apart, arms rimmed out of the sockets, skin flayed away with a razor sharp knife. The rest have been the same. Whatever did it should didn't care about it being a clean death. Demergio lowers his voice leaning in towards so you can only so only you can hear it. Ah, the funny thing is, Hong Kong police force was out here a few weeks before that. Maybe a month ago, tops. I know that doesn't seem like much, but the Wampoans don't usually let the police in here. That by itself is odd enough. But it gets even stranger. The officers were loaded to forbear too. Big guns and heavy armor with NBC seals. The works. They went to the parking garage near here and there was some kind of gunfight. Never made it back up. Back out. When backup showed up, the Wampones chased them away. Why would they let cops in and chase them away? That's exactly the kind of question you should be asking. And that the elders refused to answer when I asked. The Mergio shrugs. Go to look for yourself if you want. Watch out though. Things hang up residents in there, dealing drugs and BTLs, call themselves the Red Spear. Not too violent, if you don't push them. Be careful what you say. See you later. So don't be a smart-ass prick to them. Gotcha. And... Looks like parking garage is the last place to go. Park, 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 parking garage. Sounds like it eat a team of special forces. Not sure if we really want to go in there, but it's the mission, so let us go.